There was moments where, like, we were here illegally, and just even driving down the street, if a cop got behind you, we were like, fuck, it's over with. Danny Wolf is one of the greats. Like Black Danny, who will actually have a vision. No matter what, he's gonna make it work. I think he can be the biggest producer. The reason we came to America was because they were kind of violent. And one time this guy, like, my mom was working for this guy, and he just threw something at her. And my mom came back and told me and my brothers. And, and we just caught him slipping outside of work. And like, all three of us jumped his ass. And like, I just remember, uh, like we were, uh, there's probably like three fights, me and all three of my brothers were in. And we just beat this dude's ass. And I don't know, that just really like, to me, it's just like, damn, we're really in this bitch. We're really in America. Like, we're, it's really us against everyone. It's all about me. Because I know one day in the future, I'm going to see myself like, how was I as a kid? How, how, what did I do? What gave me that thrive to be where I am? You know, I'm, I'm going to be in my 32 bedroom mansion, you know, just puffing on that cigar and shit. But no, no cigar. I don't like cigars, but. You know what I mean, like, on some baller shit, you know, with the wine, like, Charles, get me some more water. Spinrilla! What the fuck is good? Your favorite Mexican is here, Danny Wolf. We're at South Cobb, where it all started. This is, oh this is where we get ratchet. started here. I don't know. I kind of just brought my laptop in one day to class and I told my homie like, yo, I want to become a producer. And I just played on my beats and shit. And then I just kind of just, I don't know, I just kept making beats and people just kind of, my friends kind of thought it was just like a joke. Like I was just fucking around and shit. I think it was probably the summer after ninth grade, like he came back and we all had computers at the school, but he had like put like a music program on his computer. and was like making really crazy like beats, like really, really good beats for somebody that just started. So he really just started before me. And then I wound up like learning some stuff too. So we wound up kind of learning together and we would hang out after school sometimes. and go to one of another's house and make music there. And like, we would like learn things on our own and like come back the next day, like, yo, I just figured this out. Or I just learned this and like share and just kind of bounce ideas off each other and different things we were learning and experiencing and growing with. They're like, ah, it's cool. Like, keep going. <laughs> you almost got it. I would just literally be in class, like senior, freshman, sophomore. No, it was only, honestly, it was like sophomore year. Freshman year, I was just like a fake producer. I, I was like, I had the equipment, but I never used it. And I just did it because this girl, oh, this girl left me for this guy. And I was like, I need something to, to like one up this shit. So I was like, I'm a producer now, fuck it. And then like I bought the equipment. I was like a fake producer for like a whole year. I knew this is what I wanted to do for sure. Like even here, like senior year when my, when my teacher was like, aren't you gonna go take the SATs? Cause you, you take the SATs towards the end of the, like school year or whatever the fuck. And I just sat down, I was like, nah, I'm not taking that shit. Plan B is never to have a plan. So there was no plan B. I was like, this shit's gonna work out. And I always bump heads with my family because they're Mexican and you have to go to college. So I was just like, nah, fuck that. Like, I'm running it up. You growing up for, for Danny, it was one of those things that the expectation was for him to go to college. The expectation was for him to finish his um, high school and then go to, um, college and then go go to do things with his degree so that's what it was my mom disowned me she was like i'll disown you if you get tattoos and i was like well <laughs> this one was my first one so i was like it's a cross so it's like you know i was like 17 my manager nate who's over there he we met at little ozios and um he was with hood rich rip and I just texted him, I was, I was like, yo. Well, he was managing DJ Lokeem, so I really thought I was texting DJ Lokeem. And I was just like, yo, I want to intern for you and shit. And um, 
I can shoot videos, I can do PowerPoint presentations, I can do like anything you need me to do. I got you, like fuck the beats. I was like, whatever you need, I got you. Well, after I met him, I remember we met at a restaurant, it was him and his friend, and uh, he was young, I think he was 16 or 17, and I could just, I just knew like, I knew he was like really hungry and just, he was real like intelligent, you could tell, but it was still, he was still young and juvenile, so he would make like kid-like mistakes like at the time, but yeah, that just, that conversation there is what kind of when it started and then everything I was doing or working on at the time, uh, I was managing the artists, I ran the cash out. Um, I was working with the different projects like Scream and stuff had. I had a blog site with you no know, radio show, stuff like that with Scream. So all the stuff I'm working on, he kind of was there to like add whatever it was, whether it was like, you know, internet, blogging, video stuff, whatever. He just was like an all around intern, you know, but that's how like the relationship started. And Nate was like, bet, we need an editor. We need somebody to run the blog. I just want to shoot the videos. I didn't know how to do that shit, but I was like, I'll figure it out. There's YouTube, right? So just the fact that he replied, I was like, bet. I called my homie who has a camera. I was like, bro, I need to borrow your camera for like a month. And then I would just finesse it. I'd be on Craigslist, like calling people to borrow their cameras. <laughs> and then... But his sound was unique even from the jump. It just was like kind of rough a little bit. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, shit. Eventually he started progressing. It wasn't too much later after that where I was like, okay, bro, this intern stuff's cool, but we're gonna focus on being a producer. And... Cause he was just always taking the initiative to go do stuff and he was using his in internet knowledge and different things to just bring everything together. And it just was like, you know, you kind of can just tell like he can go somewhere with this. I was shooting videos for Hot 107.9. I was like the creative director. So all the interviews, like Waka Flocka was the first interview I shot. Cause I started editing shit. So I edited it for like Bibby, Young Thug. Like they're, when Thug first came out, I was editing like his studio session shit with Rich Homie Kwan, like Pee Wee Longway, like Skippa, uh, even like Amigos. When they were dropping like all their early shit, I was editing videos for Mixtape Kitchen. I was like 17, 18. I couldn't even get in the club and they would tell me to like go shoot someone at the club and I had fat ass X on me, go to the bathroom, shake it off and then just like shoot. And then I, like, I didn't even know about cameras like that. So I didn't know you had to have like lighting. So like the footage came out terrible. He was a hard worker. He, he was saying, you know, put me on, what's next? What's next? What's next? Just always hungry for it. Always ready for the next thing. And McConan uh, took some beats and he was like, yo, check this out. And Drink More Water Freestyle 5 dropped. And we were like, yo, this is crazy. McConan is on it. And that mixtape went up. And then from there, you know, Danny, you know, was with Hoodrich officially at that point. I mean, one thing I would say for kids that are in high school, like just stay focused and find a career that you really want to stick with. Like if you're a freshman, like, just grind it out the next couple, four years, because those, those years go by quick. And I'm super thankful that, like, sophomore year, I was just producing, because those three years make a big difference when you graduate and shit, and, like, once you hit the real world, or even if you don't want to go to college, like, those three years, they could definitely give you, like, a quick upper hand on people that were just, like, I guess, dicking around or trying to find a career. At one point, he came up with, hey, I want to be a music producer, and it was one of those things that, of course, with music industry and as an immigrant, how are you gonna succeed? How are you gonna do things? So I think I find it very interesting and very, and very um, interesting and amazing that for any young person or anybody, just really young and old, you set your mind to it, this country gives you the opportunities that you have to excel. So for Danny, it was more of those things that I, I don't, I want to do school because it's a requirement. I don't see myself going to college, yet I don't want to be part of the uh, part of the pro percentage that really doesn't do anything. So it was encouraging for him to 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 go forth and beyond to do. 
to really do something with his life. Now we're going to this church where me and my brothers, well, first when we came to America, we went to Riverdale and we lived in Lake Harving Apartments. And from there, we stayed there for like two years. When we first came to America, I was like four years old. And we went to this church, which we're about to go to. And we stayed there for like three, four years. And it's, it was like this, kind of like a, a shelter underneath the church. And we just stayed there. And um, I had to clean up my middle school because there was a school right in front of it. And we didn't really have like transportation or money like that. So I had to go to that school. And we couldn't pay like monthly tuition and shit. So I had to like clean it after class. Um, I had to clean the gym after class. I had to clean the cafeteria after class every day, like all of middle school. And then, um, yeah, I mean, the, the, like that church was, I guess, the foundation of where, like, my mindset comes from, I guess. And then, yeah, like that's 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 really where it started for me and my brothers, because we were technically supposed to be here. So even my mom driving like every morning, it was like frightening because she could get like deported. And there'd be times where like cops would pull us over and they would be like, this is a fake license. And they'd be like, you haven't gotten pulled over in five, six years. And she would be like, she, she couldn't speak English. So he would just look at her and then like look at me in the car seat. And then he'd just give it back and like, they'd let us go. But it was like definitely frightening like every day. Like, it was weird because you're not supposed to be here and you could tell like, even if a cop or some, anything happened, like we just had to be on alert like at all the time because we weren't supposed to be here. And the moment you go to jail, the moment any little traffic violation, anything, you it's over with back in Mexico and then you're banned. So I believe he was around 14 years of age when my mother had to go back because my grandmother was, um, she has diabetes, so she had to go back to tend to her. And the decision came about where, you know, you're still a young man, what do you want to do with your life? Where do you want to see from here? And uh, my mom left him under my care. So within my care, we were able to, no, I wouldn't say uh, we were able to have conversations about it. So often my 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 train of thought with him was, what do you want to do with your life? The bus is right. Damn bus is straight. <laughs> and then at that light just bus right. I mean, we're definitely excited because they seen the whole, like me and my high school friends, we used to get stuck in parking lots in Atlanta because we, we were broke, <laughs> like we couldn't get out. So it was definitely... But you couldn't, you couldn't pay to get out of the parking lot. Yeah, we couldn't pay to get out of the parking lot. <laughs> so, and they were with me at that time. So now, you know, when we go to LA or when we travel or when we go to New York, like it, you can tell the difference, but you know, we still getting started. It's, it's just the beginning and, you know, they keep me grounded and shit, keep me motivated. Or they just be seeing, like, the fuck shit that people be doing in the industry and we just be, like, looking at each other, like, laughing, like, what the fuck is this? Because it's so different from being in high school and, like, a teacher and, like, your homies. Like, it's like, it's like some fake beef, but then now in the industry it's like, but uh, we gotta be careful and shit like that. But not be careful, but we can't let that shit get to us. It's very seldom that you find somebody um, like, like Danny who will actually have a vision and know where they wanna go. Like a lot of people will say like, hey, I want this, but okay, well, how are you gonna get there? He actually has a vision. He has like a vehicle to drive the vision. And it's not often that you meet somebody with a vehicle to drive the vision. I mean, we definitely changed it up because just the lyrics, the beats, the production, it used to be so like conscious and so, I don't know, thought out and shit like that. So um, we definitely, we can definitely tell that some old heads don't rock with us like that. Cause I, like even when I submitted the project and I was like trying to see what they thought, they were just not with it. But 
I don't know. I always get advice from OGs, and then I always do like the complete opposite. <laughs> what What do you mean? Like they weren't with it? Like they didn't understand it? Or I mean, they're not gonna understand like a low pump song. They're not gonna fuck with it. But then when we drop it, it got like a hundred million views on YouTube. Danny for sure. Like, and it don't be me. It be him knowing them. Like, I mean, like, how the hell you get one with? Let's say Lil Pump. Like, oh, I've been new Lil Pump back when he, and then I go look at Lil Pump little video, and back when Lil Pump was still first started, Danny Wood was there. You know what I'm saying? So he got a good ear to know who's coming up next type shit. We just be ourselves, and you know, the shit that they told us to not do is the shit that helped us out and made people fuck with us, I guess. They would just kind of, I guess, want some, like, shit that's ear candy to them. But then to us, it's like we like some distorted, like lit shit. A lot of people, they put in hours into their music, like 10,000 hour rule or whatever. But I always put like a lot of hours into my spiritual life and like making sure my mind is good, making sure that backbone of my mind is like solid. When shit like that comes, like when turbulence comes, like we don't shake up or we don't fold. Because in the industry, you might make a hit and then people might be like, oh, you got lucky. Then you make another one. And they're like, oh, that was just, that was just, you know, beginner's yeah, luck. Riding off the second one. Yeah, and then the third one, fourth one, fifth one, after the sixth one, then you're like, damn, maybe, maybe I might be onto something. Like, but it's not because, yeah, I did it, it's because of that spiritual foundation where I'm, I'm listening to God and I'm like, you know what, maybe God actually might be talking to me. So I, will, I remember clearly one morning he came up, he said, I'm going to, I don't know where, it's sort of like a, he was an, is, I see it as divine inspiration and in what you call it. He woke up and he said, hey, I think that I am going to dedicate my life to be a music producer. I'm going to be a music producer. And he said, I'm watching two years. I'm going to have an internship. And after that, the internship is going to arrive at work and I'm going to have planning on this because or whatnot. So it was literally as, as as if he was accessing the future and seeing him himself and it's been very fulfilling and very we're a true told we're proud of him see this was a school i had to clean right here and then that was the gym me and my brothers had to clean also it's crazy it got lit we would, we would steal the golf carts and we like when we opened up the gym it'd be a whole bunch of roaches and shit and like we would just run over them shit it's like it would get crazy this is where we live right here like inside of this, where it says private property right there. So this is where we used to live, me and my brothers, right here. And this, we didn't have no money, so this old guy named Eugene, he was the owner of that church, and he just like let me and my mom stay here. He got my mom a car because we were immigrants, so he pretty much got her like this red Ford Focus, and we were thugging it, because we were basically here illegally, like I said, so. This is where we kept it low key. Like nobody knew we, we were in America basically. And we lived inside of here. It was like hella roaches. We could hear like the rats and shit. And then um, and I had to clean this school over here. Every day after class, I had to clean up this school, clean up the cafeteria. And then in here, we're where like the administrative people worked. So my mom and I, we would like, make sure that the people upstairs, it was like this African congregation. We would make sure that they were good, they had everything that they had. Um, and then this was like basically like where I grew up. This was like my playground when I was like nine till I would say like, no, probably like seven to 13, 12 years old. My mom was super Christian. So I had to hide my music, like wear it on the low, like in the car. But that's what would get me through all this shit, like hip hop. That's where it really started. That's what made me like, I like how it made me feel even though I was going through all this shit. So. What were you listening to? Do you remember? Honestly, like Waka Flocka, like hella, hella like trap music. And my mom and my brothers would be like, why are you listening to that shit? Like, what are you seeing that shit? Like, that's the devil's music. That's what they tell me. They'd be like, it's the devil, you're going to hell. I'd be like, I'd be like, I don't give a fuck. Like, I guess it was, we're going to hell then. And then, like, people would get pissed. This, these people would get pissed. Um, it used to be a shed right there, but I guess they took it down. 
It's definitely kind of weird coming back here because, I don't know. Last time I was here, we were just broke as fuck. <laughs> but it's lit though. Like if I told my brothers I came back, they'd be like, what the fuck? Because <laughs> they, they, they get nightmares of this place. They're like, hell no, we got to work harder. Like yeah. eating like eating with the roaches. Like we had to eat so fast, the roaches, like it was crazy. The roaches didn't give a fuck. Like as soon as we put our food down, boom, it get flooded. And we had to eat so fast for the roaches like every day here. So it, it was just, it was kind of like a, I don't know. We were just happy to be here, I guess. I was a kid, so I never, I've never been the type to complain or to be like, why are we here? I just go at the moment and be like, this is what we have. And it's very um, rewarding to see how far he's going in life. And, you know, he's a Mexican-American person who is moving forward in life, who's moving forward as an immigrant. And the laboring that he has, he's moving forward to create a higher ceiling for the next generation. He's a very, 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 very hard worker as far as like with his craft and making beats and just, he's, he's very, 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 very focused on that. I feel like Danny is headed on the right path. He just gotta keep making good music and finding, he good at finding people before they, like all the way big. Like he know how to, he got a good ear for the music to get with the young folks and the new wave and different kinds of music. Like he be putting me down. Like you should get with this person, like, they make this kind of music, you know what I mean? So I feel like he should just stay hungry and he gonna get everywhere he's trying to go, you know what I'm saying? He is just super level-headed and always is just the best version of himself. I see where he's trying to like, he's really putting forth the effort to try to be the best that he can possibly be.